Hello, it's me again. And I just want to talk about something that I was really disappointed to be hearing about, um, but I want to address it. And it is specifically for businesses who have maybe one or two black employees only. So I've said this before about not making this whole race to fix race relations the burden of black people. I thought I kind of made it clear that, you know, you shouldn't be expecting black people to be the ones to educate, to answer copious amounts of questions without you doing the work first. So you remember, I've always said, you know, do some work, show some willing, you know, Google is free. You know what I mean? So you can find all sorts of resources. Um, it's not difficult. You don't have to wait for anybody to give you anything. You can find loads of stuff. Just even go to Amazon and type in like books about racism or white privilege or white supremacy. So it's free. Is there are some companies out there and actually no, let me not say companies, let me say individuals, let me say leaders, because you know what companies are not sentient beings, they are made up of individuals and people. So there are some leaders out there who have ignored their black employee, paid little attention to the Black Lives Matter piece, haven't asked their black employee how they're doing, haven't asked and just showed any sort of compassion or empathy because they're still in this case space of, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. So I've not even reached out to them in that way to kind of, you know, carried on as normal, and kind of hoping that they don't bring it up because if they bring it up, maybe they'll talk about it, but I'm gonna talk about this Black Lives Matter stuff like, let's avoid it. But then now the tide has started to turn and now people are getting a bit more vocal and you know there might be some other people are going what's our position on this or your shareholders or you know an exec direct you know your board have turned around and said what are you going to do about this like what's the statement we need to put out a statement because everybody's going to be putting out a statement soon what are you going to do so those leaders have gone to their one black employee and have asked them to draft a press statement or a positioning statement. They've also gone to that one black employee and asked them to come up with a 4.5 point, 10 point plan on how the business is going to improve um, the experience for black people or you know, their anti-racist charter or their race charter um, and commitment or whatever else it is. They have gone to their one black employee to do this. Please, please do not do this. Do not do this. So first off, like you, and you, I'm just giving you my opinion. It's sodding lazy. It's lazy to do that because what that says is you don't want to do the work. It also says that you're doing this because you can't be bothered to do the work. You also feel like this Black Lives Matter thing is fundamentally not a big deal. It's just something that you have to do. Like you have to just, you know, almost like having a CSR policy or program or whatever. Like you might want to do a little bit, but not really. Let me just show the world that we've got something. So you've already made that clear because you've made this somebody else's res responsibility, despite the fact that I've said it is your responsibility as a leadership team, as a leader to lead, to do what you pay to do, to show leadership, to show that you're an individual of values, to show that you have a moral compass that runs through you and by extension runs through your business. So you're taking it seriously enough to do the prep to try and understand, but also to support your one black employee. This is even before we get into trying to understand why you have only one black person or two black people in your business, like a small number. The other thing, the more important thing, so this is the thing I care about more than, you know, whether leaders know what to say, is your black employees right now are under an enormous amount of pressure and not by you doing this, you're making it worse, right? Because you're already not giving them the support that they need. You're already not showing them that they matter by extension of what you're doing um, around, you know, whether it's your positioning statement, what you're going to look at as a business, if you must still look at look at this from a diversity and inclusion point of view. But also, if your black employee drafts something, and let's say for whatever reason, you know, it doesn't hit the right tone or whatever, 
you will turn around and blame your black employee. Now you might say to me, oh my gosh, Shereen, I never do, I would never do that, but that's what they will think. So they are stressed and now worried already. They've already woken up to the fact that this country is not really willing to put its money where its mouth is in terms of the whole Black Lives Matter piece, collectively, I mean. They're already aware that race crime or hate crime is going to increase. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. So they're already fearful, right? So for some people, they're very conscious uh, of the fact that there is not universal support for Black Lives Matter. There is not universal to support to improve systematic racism. Notice I didn't even say get rid of it. I just said improve. Do you know what I mean? So they're already well aware of that. And now you want to make them responsible for your business to step up and not only be anti-racist, but to do more to provide an environment where Black people can thrive flourish in the same way that their white counterparts can and you want to make it their responsibility so tell me how does that make sense it is not their job it is not their job and you have to question yourself by the fact that you made it their job because what that tells me is you're thinking only of yourself like i'm going to say it You know, and I had a suspicion this would happen. Like, I'm not surprised. I had a suspicion this would happen. And I thought I made my points clear in, you know, previous videos. Clearly I haven't. So I'm going to do it again. But it's not, it's not fair to do this to black employees. Remember, this is the reason why I'm speaking out. It's for them. Because I know I can say what they can't say, what they're still too scared to say. Really senior people can't say what I'm saying. But also you've got entry level like employees that are being like landed with this. And honestly, do you know how I feel? I want to say like, if there's anybody, any leader that's done this, what I want to say is you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You really, really ought to be ashamed of yourself because you are showing no compassion, no empathy, no leadership, for those people who want to say, oh, yeah, but they probably didn't think about it. They probably didn't mean it. Well, do you know what? I thought we've already established that we are where we are in this moment in 2020 due to ignorance. Ignorance is not an excuse anymore. It is not an excuse. It's not a reason. So I don't buy that anymore. And I think you should know the emotion you should you should see and feel nobody is immune those people who want to carry on like this is business as usual because they can afford to probably probably and actually you can you can i'll be honest you can kind of probably tell the people that don't have any black people in their businesses or um are not what's the word sympathetic is not the right word but are not don't care enough to maybe question how they do things because they're pretty much carrying on like it's business as usual like i'm not judging i'm just saying it is what it is so they're thinking it's not my problem because i don't have like black people in my business so like i care about black lives matter but you know, still got covid19 to deal with so all i'm saying is don't do it you're putting them under a massive amount of pressure and also you're showing weak leadership so if anybody's watching this and you have done this, then you owe your employees an apology. And you need to take this back off them as quick as you can. And you go and fix it. If you must, even though I told you not to do this, but if you must go and hire a PR company, I'd rather you do that actually, because you know, that's probably what happens behind the scenes anyway. But I'd rather you do that rather than put this on your black employee because it's, it's, it's not fair. Like, I'm not going to name the names of the companies who are doing this, but trust me, I know who they are. It's like that saying, I know where the bodies are buried, but don't do it. And it has been more than one. So somebody think, oh, so somebody just told her and it's just like one thing. No, 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 no. Because people forget, like for every single video that I put out every day. Sorry, I'm picking my nail varnish off. For every day I put a video out 
there's more questions, there's more conversations, which I welcome. That's why I do it, because these are the sorts of questions and conversations that should be happening. I also get information about what's going on. I get, inf you know, people share how my videos are helping, or probably not, because, you know, for some people, they're not always helpful. Some people can't cope with the bluntness and, you know, and the honesty. And do you know what? This is not even me at my worst. Like, I'm trying to be, like, really well behaved a little bit. So I know this stuff happens. Um, and look, I have been the only black person in a business. And I honestly, I know how it feels. I know how it feels on, like, an average day without anything going on. Never mind this. Like, all eyes will be on that poor, poor person. And do you know what? If you're a HR person and you're black and you're the only black person in your business, like my heart goes out to you. If you're a DNI person and you're black and you're the only black person in your business, because you know a lot of businesses like to hire people of colour in DNI roles because you know that ticks a box, right? Not to say that those people aren't good, just to be crystal clear, that's not what I'm saying. But those businesses do like to do that and tap themselves on the back because then when somebody says to them, like, do you have black people? They go, yeah, of course, of course we do, of course we do. So and so heads up diversity and inclusion. And that's that. We need to do better by our black employees. And that means you, we need to stop and think and be thoughtful. That's what I talk about, about being deliberate, being consistent, being intentional. You know, for everyone that thought, you know, I was being too harsh, like, listen, now you understand why I mean, because I know what happens behind closed doors. I know what happens. I've been there. I know what directors say. I know the words they use. I know the language they use. I know why they're calling their solicitors and their lawyers for X, Y, and Z. I know all of that stuff. And I know the impact it has when you're a black employee, whether there's lots of you or whether there's one of you. That's why I can talk about this. I keep saying I'm not here to, you know, give you like 10 step guidance or, you know, whatever. There are other people that were doing this. I'm just waiting for the big consultancy companies to come out with the, you know, if you want to protect your business from, you know, Black Lives Matter or whatever it is, here's a, you know, playbook or whatever it is that you can use. That, that will all come. But they won't be talking about this. Fundamentally, they won't be approaching this from a point of view of protecting Black employees or trying to make the experience of Black employees better. That might be like a byproduct. But that's what I really care about. That's why I'm doing this. This is not for me about, you know, winning brownie points of businesses. We've already established that's not, <laughs> it's not going to be the case. I'm doing this because I want to make people think differently. And hopefully in that thinking different, you will just do better by your black employees. And if you have no black employees, you will think about why you have no black employees and then start prepping your business to welcome more black people when you do wake up and realise that actually your business needs to be more diverse. I think that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow.